Hello guys, welcome to my new video series where I will try out every free drawing app to making a webtoon. The rule is simple, I will be creating a comic with a complete workflow, from script, storyboard, line art, coloring, finishing, all the way to typesetting. The first app chosen for this series based on the previous poll, it is Paint. Let's download the app first, just so you know, I'm a desktop user, I don't have a tablet and I only use PC for drawing. And yeah, the app that won the poll is actually targeted toward mobile device. As you can see, for Windows user, it's only over 1 hour demo per day. How are you even supposed to make a comic in just 1 hour? Since I will trying every app in the free version, so I will try the demo version of EB Spain. Okay, the first step is, let's try creating a file for the comic. Just so you know, this is actually my first time using Ibis Paint to make a comic. I did try it one before because a follower asked me to, but that was back in the 2024, so yeah, I'm not really familiar with it. As usual, I tried to set up a webtoon canvas with 15 slices. However, Ibis Paint doesn't support that because the canvas length is considered over the limit. So, in the end, I reduced the height and treated it as canvas equivalent for about 10 slices in webtoon page. And then, this pop-up show up again, reminding me that I'm only allowed to use it for 1 hour a day. There is even a timer on top left corner. It honestly feels like I'm taking an exam with the supervisor standing behind me, ready to snatch my paper the moment the time runs out. As you can see, the interface is very minimalistic, which really show that this app is designed for mobile device. The first thing I did was check the layers, and there was a tutorial pop-up telling me that I could import photos, so I tried importing my webtoon character sheets. And this is where it feels different. Usually, other apps open imported file in a separate tab, but in Ibis Paint, everything is merged into one file. The imported file instantly becomes a new layer. Next, another tutorial pop-up appears showing some of the shortcuts for using this app. The shortcuts are really built in by default, which means we can customize them ourselves. Okay, since the timer on the top left is making me feel rushed, let's jump straight into creating the storyboard. The tab on the left contains the script I have already written and will be turned into webtoon. I'm going to create a several panel and later choose the one that works best to test the comic making feature. After searching for quite a while, I finally found the shape tool on the top corner of the app. At least now, we can easily create rectangular panel shapes. Honestly, I wish it were placed closer to the brush tool so it would be easier to find. Just figuring out how to make a simple rectangle tool took me about 5 minutes. After that, I started planning the panel layout on the canvas which ended up looking like this. Next, I went straight into creating the storyboard by adding a new layer underneath the panel. I chose blue so it will be easier to distinguish from the line art later. And this is where I first felt how the brush behave in the Ibis Paint. As a desktop user who relies more on the keyboard shortcut rather than gesture like mobile user, I found it a bit difficult. Every time I tried to make a thicker stroke by pressing harder with the brush, it was detected as the color picker instead. You could say the main reason is simply that I'm not used to it yet. I'm also not trying to compare this app with other apps, especially since this one is giving me 1 hour free demo per day. Just look at the timer in the corner, it really makes me feel more rushed to chase my target. I tried customizing the brushes to match my preferences, but it didn't really make any difference. No matter how fast or slow I draw my strokes, the results feel the same. So instead of overcomplicating things, I decided to just focus on the line art. Of course, I created a new layer for it, place it above the storyboard layer. It honestly feels like rolling back time to the days when making comic mean doing everything manually. But yeah, it really just a matter of getting used to it. Ibis Paint actually has a wide variety of brush, but I didn't have any time to explore them properly because the timer in the corner constantly ticking down. Out of all the panel, I ended up choosing to work on just this one. Yeah, I don't want to create all of the panel in Ibis Paint because making even a single panel within one hour is honestly not enough. So I might just make two panel instead. At least there is a continuous conversation. I actually wanted to explain things more technically like I usually do, but I couldn't really go all out because of the timer. I mean, even showing features, 
cost into the daily usage limit, so I figured it's better to use my time as efficiently as possible, right? After finishing the line art, I add the webtoon background that I had previously made in SketchUp. Then I try to apply layer masking to the line art for the character in the back. However, it turns out that Ibis Paint doesn't have a proper layer mask feature. I'm talking about layer masking here, not clipping max, since they serve different purpose. Think of it like covering your line art with tape. When you want it to show up again, you just remove the tape. In the end, I had no choice but to manually erase the line art, which result in something like this. Next, I move on to the coloring the line art. I tried creating a layer folder to keep things organized, but for some reason, I had trouble putting the layer into the folder. I didn't have to read the manual since the usage time kept ticking down, so I just created a new layer and started coloring right away. Luckily, Ibis Paint also has a lasso fill tool, which at least let me color and shade pretty quickly. Since I didn't want to use too many layers, I decided to do shading directly in the same layer. Just when I was getting into the flow of coloring this panel, Ibis Paint suddenly kicked me out of the app. I was basically forced to close it. Thankfully, Ibis Paint has an auto save feature, so I don't have to worry about losing the work I just did. When I tried to open it again, I was immediately offered the subscription feature. There is 7 day trial, but I already said from the beginning that I will be try the free drawing app. So I decided to wait until tomorrow instead. And then what now? Well, see you tomorrow guys. <laughs> Finally, day 2 is here. This time I read the Ibis Paint manual on the official website beforehand. So as a planning man, I thought they laid out a clear plan for what I'm going to do within the next 1 hour. Now, I know how to create a layer folder, and once again, mobile devices clearly have the advantage here, since moving layers into folder is done with a swipe gesture to the right. Long story short, today I'm going to work in a more organized way. After that, I continued shading process that I didn't get finished yesterday. On top of that, I also tried using the blur feature and low opacity eraser. So the final comic panel will stay consistent with the style of the panel I usually create. As you can see, about 80% of my work in this app relies on the lasso fill tool. So honestly, I don't really need to use the wide variety of brushes, except for the brush with unusual shapes. And this is the final coloring result for this panel. Next come the finishing stage. I try to recreate the kind of comic panel result I usually make, which is honestly a bit complicated, but that's fine. This is also a testing page to see whether Ibis Paint feature can actually help me achieve that result. So the first step was adding a white gradient to the background behind the character to create a sense of depth and distance. For this, I use the airbrush tool to achieve that effect. After that, it times to trying the layer blending mode. I want to create a morning atmosphere, so I choose light blue color for the color grading. I block in the light blue and apply it at blending mode, with around 20% opacity. Besides that, I also tried adding dot texture like I usually do. After that, I add a white outline around the character to help keep the focus on them. And with that, the background finishing complete. Next, we move on to finishing the character. I start by darkening the character in the foreground using blue color set to multiply mode. I also add a white gradient to the character in the back to maintain a sense of depth and distance. I also tried adding some texture variation to the character in the foreground by using the asset available in this app. I simply adjust the color and change the blending mode until it looked like this. And also, I blurred the part of the character in the foreground to enhance the sense of focus. Finally, there is just one step left. Adding the speech bubble for the dialog. At first, I tried creating my own shape so they stay consistent with my usual style, but I forgot that there is no automatic outline feature for shapes here, so I decided to just use an asset instead, and download the one that felt most suitable to me. After downloading, I just simply type the dialog using the font I usually use, which is Lafayette Comic Pro, and with that, one full webtoon panel is finally complete, entirely using Ibis Paint. As you can see, there is less than 30 minutes left in the timer on the top corner. 
I felt challenged to finish the next panel within the remaining time, so I decided to continue working on the next panel in this app. After all, I already understood which feature I could use. In the end, I immediately moved on to creating the next panel which only feature the bus up shot of the character. I actually wanted to open some references as well, but I think that would have wasted time when the deadline for this panel is under 30 minutes. So I just went straight into drawing without overthinking anything, just went straight to finish faster. Then I move on to coloring as usual, while still trying maintain quality as the remaining time keeps shrinking. And this is the panel I managed to create in under 30 minutes. And that also wraps up this app test for making webtoon. So what do you think guys? The result looks pretty much the same as usual, right? As you can see, the timeless for this file is just 2 hours, meaning I really use full 2 hours just to create 2 panels. Which means if I need to make around 60 panels for 1 episode of webtoon, it will take me for around 2 months just to finish. If we talk about the pro and cons, the strength lie in the brush variety and how like the app is, which is really support the mobile device user. However, for the PC user like me, the app isn't just suitable for me. My Wacom stabilizer feels like it's not working at all. And that's all for today. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.